Hi, I'm Rob. I'm a developer, and I'm here to teach you about HTTP requests. You've worked with HTTP all the time when accessing a site, loading its content, and interacting with its content. In this video, you'll learn about the different processes that take place to make these actions on the internet work smoothly. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and is used to structure requests and responses over the internet. The transfer of resources happens using TCP. Transmission Control Protocol. In viewing web pages, TCP manages the channels between your browser and the server, in this case, Codecademy.com. TCP is used to manage many types of internet connections in which one computer or device wants to send something to another. HTTP is the command language that the devices on both sides of the connection must follow in order to communicate. When you type an address such as Codecademy.com into your browser, you are commanding it to open a TCP channel to the server that responds to that URL. In this situation, your browser, which is making the request, is called the client. The URL you are requesting is the address that belongs to the server. Once the TCP connection is established, the client sends an HTTP GET request to the server to retrieve the web page it should display. After the server has sent the response, it closes the TCP connection. GET requests are one kind of HTTP method a client can call. They retrieve an existing resource from a server. POST requests create new resources. PUT requests edit an existing resource. Finally, DELETE requests delete an existing resource. Let's explore an example of how GET requests, the most common type of request, are used to help your browser, the client, access resources on the web. Suppose you want to check out the latest course offerings from Codecademy.com. After you type the URL into your browser, your browser will extract the HTTP part and recognize that it is the name of the network protocol to use. Then it will take the domain name from the URL, in this case, codecademy.com, and ask the internet domain name server to return an internet protocol IP address. Now the client knows the destination's IP address. It then opens a connection to the server at that address using the HTTP protocol as specified. It will initiate a GET request to the server, which contains the IP address of the host and optionally a data payload. The GET request contains the following text. This identifies the type of request, the path, and the protocol HTTP version 1.1. The second line of the request contains the address of the server, which is www.codecademy.com. There may be additional lines depending on what data your browser chooses to send. If the server is able to locate the path requested, the server might send a response back. In the response, it could have a header, HTTP 1.1, that states it is the HTTP 1.1 protocol, and it has the status number of 200 and OK, meaning there are no issues with the request. This header is followed by the content requested, which in this case is the information needed to render, codecademy.com, in this case, content type text, HTML, meaning it's sending back information in the form of text and HTML. If the server is not able to locate the path requested by the client, it will respond with this header, which means that the server identifies that it understands the HTTP protocol, but the 404 not found status code signifies that the specific piece of content requested was not found. This might happen if the content was moved or if you typed in the URL path incorrectly or if the page was removed. Since your HTTP requests can be read by anyone at certain network junctures, it might not be a good idea to deliver information such as your credit card or password using this protocol. Fortunately, many servers support HTTPS, short for HTTP Secure, which allows you to encrypt data that you send and receive. Thanks for taking a look at HTTP requests with me. We were able to cover how TCP allows a client to connect with a server and how HTTP allows us to structure requests and responses. We learned about the different types of requests, get, post, put, and delete. We took a look at HTTP message properties and response headers. We saw that a status number of 200 and OK means that there are no issues with the request, while a 404 status signifies that a specific piece of content requested was not found. Finally, we saw HTTP Secure, which allows you to encrypt data that you send and receive. For even more information, check out our article.